Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I challenge you to create this timer project. This is how it works. To start it, just click on it or anywhere here on the green piece. To stop it, click on it again. Of course, to start it again, all you have to do is click. And to reset it, just double click it. Please try to solve this problem before you watch the solution because that's the only way that you're gonna get better. Let's go ahead and get started guys let's create our folder we're going to call this one timer let's open up our visual studio and we're going to open up that folder all right let's create our three files we have index.html style.css and script.js. We're going to start with our HTML. Let's click Shift 1 Enter and we're going to link all our files together. So there's our style.css and there's our script.js. All right, and before we get started, I'm going to split up the screen so you can see the changes in real time. Let's right click on the screen and open with live server. All right, now we can actually get started here inside the body. We're gonna start by creating a div element. Let's split that up. And we're gonna give this a class of timer container. And within this timer container is where our timer is gonna be displayed. So let's create a H1 element. And we're gonna give this an ID so we can access it later through JavaScript. Let's call it timer display. And we could really leave this empty if we want, but we're gonna go ahead and add the minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. That way we can actually see something when we're working with our CSS and giving it color and whatnot. All right, that's gonna be it for our HTML. I'll see you guys in part two. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our CSS. We're gonna start in the body. We're gonna change the font family. I'm gonna use a font called Software Tester 7. If you don't have this font, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you where you can get it. Open up a web page and search for 1001 free fonts. And you're gonna click on this first link. You can search for it up here. So just type in Software Tester 7. Go ahead and click that button. And here it is, click download. And once you download it, if you have Windows 7, you can go here and you can type in font settings. Go ahead and drag and drop that file that you just downloaded in here and it's going to add it to your machine so it'll be available for you to use. And if you don't wanna use this font, that's totally fine. You can go with another font if that's what you wanna do. All right, and we're also gonna change the background color to black but we're actually going to comment this out for now otherwise we won't be able to see our timer there all right for the timer container we're going to change the background color to yellow green and i'm also going to give it a border of five pixels thick solid and i want it to be gray Let's also give it a border radius. That way the edges are a little bit rounded, just two pixels, not too much. And we want it to come off the top by 19%. So that way it's kind of like in the center of the, the screen. All right, let's move on to our H1 element, which contains the text inside of our timer. Let's change the font color to white. And let's also use text align center so we can place the content inside of the time container in the center. And let's change the font size. I'm gonna go with 120 pixels. We want it to be pretty big. That way we can actually see it. And notice that there's a big space in the top and the bottom here. We wanna get rid of that. So 
we're going to set margin to zero and this is what we have let's go ahead and uncomment this and we're going to open up this and this is what we have all right that's going to be it for our css i'll see you guys in part three all right let's get started with our javascript we're going to start by creating a couple of variables we're going to create one called time began we're going to initialize that to null and i'm going to write a comment here as to the purpose of this variable so this one is checking for did the clock start let's create another one called timer stopped and we're going to initialize that to null as well and this is checking for at what time was the timer stopped let's create one called stopped duration let's initialize that to zero and this is checking for how long was the timer stopped and we're also going to create one called start interval let's initialize that to null and this is needed to stop the start interval method And let's create one final one called flag. We're going to initialize that to false. And this is to control the start and stop of the timer. All right, before we go any further, I want to remind you that we don't have any buttons for this project. So the timer container here is going to serve as the start and the stop. So when you click on it, the timer is going to start and when you click on it again it's going to stop the timer so in order for us to add that functionality to the timer container we need to get access to it let's store it in this variable timer container and we're going to get access to it by using get element by class name we gave it a name of timer container and it's the only one we have so we're going to give it an index of zero all right, now to add the functionality, we're gonna have to use an event listener and it's gonna be activated on the click of a button. All right, here we're gonna create an if statement and we're gonna check if our flag is not equal to true. If it's not, we're gonna start the timer and it's actually not because we initialized it to false. So this is the first thing that it's going to do this point we want to set our flag equal to true and for our else we're going to stop the timer and we're going to set our flag back to false all right so this is going to act as our start and stop button here now we're going to create the start timer function And let's also create the stop timer function. All right, for the stop timer function, we're going to create a if statement. We're gonna check if time began is equal to null. And it is because we initialized it to null. So this is the first thing that's going to happen. At that point, we wanna grab the current time using the date class. Now this is only going to be true one time because we initialized time began to null at the beginning of the project. So of course, once you call this function, time began is going to be given a new date. And once you call on the stop timer function, and then you decide to call on the start timer function again, this is not going to be true anymore. At this point, we want to know how long the timer was stopped for. So let's create another if statement. And we're going to check if time stopped is not equal to null and it's not going to be equal to null because we're actually going to initialize time stopped in the stop timer function which we're going to create in a moment so in here we need to check exactly how long it was stopped for and we're going to get that by subtracting whatever time it is right now from whatever time 
we stopped the timer. And before we move on to the stop timer function, we want to start the interval that is going to display the time on the screen. So let's create a variable called start interval and let's use the built-in function set interval to call on another function called clock running, which we're going to create in a moment. And we want to call on that function every 10 milliseconds because we want to display the milliseconds, of course, which actually go by pretty fast. So let's create that function clock running and we'll complete this in a moment. All right, for the stop timer function, we need to know at what time did you stop the timer? So let's grab the current time and let's also stop the interval. We're going to use clear interval. This is a built in function and we have to include start interval, which is the variable that we created here. And this is the only way that we can actually stop this interval that we started here. All right, so that's all done. Now let's complete the clock running function. And here we're going to create a variable called current time. We're going to initialize that to the current time using the date class. Let's create another variable called time elapsed. And we're going to get the current time. We're going to subtract the time begin variable and we're also going to subtract the stop duration. All right, now that we have the accurate time, we want to grab the minutes. So let's type in time elapsed and we're going to use the get UTC minutes function to grab the minutes from the current time. We also want to grab the seconds. And we also want to grab the milliseconds. The milliseconds are going to be returned as a long int. If we want to just display two integers, then we have to manipulate it a little bit. We're going to use the floor function and we're going to divide that by 10. So we can only get two integers in return because we don't want to return this long integer and display that on the screen. All right, now that we have the minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, we want to display them on the screen. So let's get element by ID and let's get access to the timer display. All right, let's use inner HTML. First, we want to check if minutes is less than 10. If it is, we're going to add a zero in front of it. Otherwise, we're just going to leave them how they are. And let's separate the minutes from the seconds with that colon there. And we're going to do the same thing to seconds. So if seconds is less than 10, we're going to add a zero in front of them. Otherwise, we're just going to leave them how they are. And we're going to do the same thing to milliseconds. So if they're less than 10, let's add a zero in front of them. All right, and that should do it. Let's go back to our web page here and let's go ahead and click on this. And there it is, there's the timer. Let's stop it and let's start it again. And it picked up where it left off. Now, the only thing that we haven't added is a reset feature. So let's add a feature where if you double click on the timer container, it resets the timer. So let's go up here, right under here. We're going to add another event listener to the timer container. This one's going to be activated on a double click.
In this case, we want to call on a function called reset timer that we're going to create in a moment. All right, let's actually create that function down here. And this function is actually going to be pretty simple. We just have to basically reset everything. So we're going to stop the interval. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to set time begin back to null. We're also going to set time stopped to null. And we're going to set stop duration to zero. And we also want to display nothing but zeros on our screen. So we're going to get element by D for our timer display. And we're going to set the inner HTML to that to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And we're also going to set our flag to false. And that should do it. Let's go back to the project. All right, let's start it, stop it, start it. Let's reset it by double clicking on it. And there it is. That's how you create a timer. I'll see you guys in project number 19.